Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to our channel and thanks for logging on. Today we're discussing the Ulysse Nardin Macho Palladium. You can see this full Palladium timepiece on our website. Subscribe to our YouTube channel if you enjoy these videos and please click on the card in the upper right hand corner of this screen at any time during the video to see our full sales listing for this automatic chronometer with additional accessories included, high resolution images for your desktop, and naturally complete pricing details for this Ulysse Nardin Macho Palladium. Now the Macho Palladium of 2007 followed 2006's UN160 anniversary watch, and in some ways the tooling and the design of the 160 were amortized over a larger production run by effectively turning the Macho Palladium into a continuation of the UN160 with a more robust tried and true ETA based caliber and an altogether different case composition, Ulysse Norden venturing not only into non-round watches but into the world of full palladium timepieces. So we'll talk about what that means in a moment, but let's talk about how it fits. Now it seems like every generation has its oval watch. The 60s and 70s had the Omega Dynamic, the 1990s had the first run Audemars Piguet Millinery, and the late 2000s had the Macho Palladium and the UN160. The watch is 43 millimeters as it measures across the case from 9 to 3, not inclusive of the crown. So it's not as wide as it appears at first glance. Now it's also quite slim. The watch is only 11 millimeters thick, so it easily slides underneath a tight sleeve or formal cuff. From lug to lug, you'll find the watch is the largest dimension as it's 53 millimeters from extremity to extremity across the wrist. Now it wears quite easily on the wrist. You'll note when viewed from underneath, the case, including the case back sapphire, are both cambered or slightly arced to follow the curve of the wrist, and although the strap does have conforming end pieces, that is, it hugs the flank of the case, creating a very integrated look, it does pull straight down quite easily, so it doesn't want to fight you and flare. It fits a smaller wrist well, and I would say down to about 14 and a half centimeters in circumference, your wrist will bear this watch with grace, proportion, security, and style. The strap is substantial, and you'll note Ulysse Nardin uses a navy blue, small rectangular scale alligator leather strap. Now it's bolstered where it abuts the case, but it's quite thin otherwise. Very flexible, supple calfskin underneath. One of the interesting refinements here is that for the sake of strength, the clasp itself is not palladium, but white gold, beautifully rendered, almost as though it's been skeletonized in its own right. This clasp is a work of art, beautifully polished, thin, fine, light in weight, beautifully manufactured such that the swing arm, the outer swing arm, also doubles as a spring for the trigger mechanism. It keeps the watch very secure on the wrist thanks to the twin trigger design, not friction fit. It can't simply pop open. Now let's talk about palladium. Palladium is a hallmarked precious metal, and you'll note on the case back that hallmarks are present, as well as the notation that this is 950 palladium. Hallmark and 950 signature, so the purity level is the same as you'll find in platinum versus 750 purity or 18 carat for gold. You'll also note a broad display case back, and the complexity of this case begins to reveal itself as you look at the different ways in which it's curved. You can see there is that case back camber, but it's also cambered side to side when you view it from the top. This is a fascinating and unconventional case. The lugs are all of high polish, the case band is in satin, the bezel and the case back are in high polish for contrast and the dial itself has tremendous depth. You can see the polished and applied indices in Arabic numerals and there is a brushed metallic track that steps down to a center dial with a spectacular sunburst, a stylized almost railroad style inner minutes track, broadsword hands, they're beautifully loomed so although the indices are not loomed you can easily read the watch at night, small seconds with a jump date and then a unique power reserve. Both the hand and the scale move as the watch is wound up and discharged. It's a unique unique system that Ulysse Norden uses, and it allows the watch to be beautifully arrayed along a central axis from 12 to 6, almost all of the complication, all of the calibrations, all of the action of the dial occurs. So symmetry is one of the strong points of this watch's aesthetic. Now on the case back we have the Ulysse Norden Caliber 27. What is it? Well, it's hiding underneath its 22 karat guilloche white gold winding mass, but it's a chronometer grade ETA 2892A2, beating at 4 hertz. It has a 42 hour power reserve. It features Ulysse Norden's own 
power reserve module complication. So there is a great deal of in-house watchmaking going on here. And of course, it is a COSC Swiss chronometer, continuing a tradition of Ulysse Norden chronometer grade timepieces that date back to its great navigation clocks. This is a watch that has personality, that has rarity on its side. It's very Ulysse Norden in the spirit of the freak, in the spirit of the UN 160, in the spirit of the Sonata. It's a little bit subversive within the world of luxury, and yet executed at the highest level, it has impeccable manners, so it can get away with almost anything. If you consider yourself a little bit of a subversive enthusiast, and you're not afraid to venture beyond the predictable norms of the mainstream brands, the Ulysse Norden Macho Palladium, with its heft, its character, its depth, and yes, its odd cambers might just be for you. See it and purchase it on our website.